Alright, alright, alright. This is your host, Neil Big Teller, back with another live Instagram video. You already know how this goes. Every time they kick me off of TikTok, I gotta come on here and give you guys the the uploads. Alright. Um this was the video I was gonna do on TikTok. It's called a super fluid society. Of course they wanna get you for the hate speech. It's all good. To God be the glory. At least now I can get a lot more information out to the public about this topic. I feel like this is a very important topic that the body of Christ needs to hear at this time. And without further ado, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for allowing me to come on Instagram to fulfill the word that you have put in my spirit to preach to the body of Christ this morning, Father God. I pray that those who will hear this video will receive this message in spirit and truth for the God that your Holy Spirit will guide me in what to say and what not to say. For the God, those who need to hear this message, I trust that you will convict them on the things that they need to work on, the things that they need to let go of, the things that they need to change in their lives. For the God, for those who are not saved, for the God, I pray and I know that your Holy Spirit will move on their hearts and move in their minds and move in their souls to get a water baptism and to get saved in Jesus' name. We decree and declare it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's get into what superfluous means, right? But before we get into that, I got to give you guys scripture and we're going to break down the definitions and then we're going to get into the meat of this word because. Even though we're going to touch on scriptures, we got to touch on the topic of the church, how brothers and sisters are carrying themselves in the church, how the world's been carrying themselves and expose all the darkness and wickedness for what it is, sin. So without further ado, let's go to Leviticus chapter 21, verses 17 and 18. This is my notes. So let's see. It says, speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that has any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whosoever man he be that has a blemish, so you want to underline that word blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame or he that has a flat nose or anything superfluous. We'll read that chapter one more time, right? Rewatch this video as much time as you need to get the notes and, and write it down. And study for your own self. Leviticus chapter 21, verses 17 and 18. This is God speaking to Moses on the behalf of Aaron. Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that has any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. Right? It says, For whosoever man he be that has a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame or he that has a flat nose or anything superfluous. So God is talking to Moses about Aaron and his sons, which is the Levites. Right? This is the Levitical priesthood in the Old Testament. As we know, and if you guys are familiarized with the Old Testament, the Old Testament dealt with the Torah, the law. Now, in the law, priests cannot approach God with any blemish. They had to make sure that they had to go through a lot of ceremonial rituals and cleansing. So, God is letting Moses know to tell Aaron, any one of his seed in their generations, right? Let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. Talking about the show bread in the in the in the 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 holy the holy room right because you have the holy of holies where the ark of the covenant is at then you have the holy place where the showbread and the manure sticks are at the seven Jewish candlesticks that you see in Jewish um, culture you know this is where the priests deal with ceremonial rituals then you have the outer court where they sacrifice um, animals for the atonement of sins right so you have the outer court the holy place and the holy of holies all right so it says any man that has a blemish he shall not approach so let's look up what the word blemish means 
Blemish means a defect in the body of a man or an animal. So the word blemish means a defect in the body of a man or an animal. God is holy. Therefore, there's no blemishes. There's no defects in him. He is without sin. So Jesus Christ, who was made to be the atonement for our sins, even though he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, he had no blemishes, but he had no sin. He, didn't, he did not have the sin nature that man had. All right? So this is also part of my notes. It says, to be without blemish is to be without a mark or problem. Perfect. God is perfect and he requires us to be like him because we are made in his image and likeness. Remember in the beginning of Genesis it says, let us create man in our image and likeness. Male and female, he created them. Right? So God created us perfect in the beginning. But when Adam and Eve fell from grace, when they sinned against God, they were found with blemish, defect. And ever since then, the seed of Adam, which is the sons of God, sons of Adam, not the sons of God, sons of Adam were found with defect. This is why Jesus Christ had to die for our sins so we could be able to be born again. We, we could be cleansed by the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is what sanctifies us and make us holy and righteous before God. Now, the word superfluous is the title of this video. But we're going to give you the definition of what superfluous means. Give me a second. So, what does it mean to be superfluous or superfluity? Let's look at that definition. It says superabundance, a greater quantity than is wanted. Right? Another definition is something that is beyond what is wanted, something rendered unnecessary by its abundance. So, Superfluous means uh, something that is in abundance but is not necessary, it's unnecessary, right? It's not wanted, it's rendered obsolete. So let's go to my notes and then we go to scriptures and break it down as we go through the notes. I've written an article about this, it's called A Superfluous Nation. You guys can see it. And read the article on Facebook if you have me as a friend on Facebook. Or you can go to the website at www.footworkministries.com. Go to the blogs. I, I write blogs every day. Or not every day, but daily. Right? As much as I can. I'll try to post and upload blogs daily. Right? So if you want to check out to see any articles I've written. The Lord has put on my spirit to write. You guys can read those articles and books for free at www.footworkministries.com. I've talked about this topic we're talking about now, so I've gotten to more details. So if you guys are friends of mine on Facebook, you can read the blogs because I posted on the Facebook, right? It'll lead you right to the website. Now, let's go to my notes. It says, we live in a superfluous society that overemphasize on sexuality. Now we're getting into the meat. If God didn't even want Aaron's generation of priests, which is the Levites, to have a flat nose, be a blind person, a lame, to approach with any type of blemish, anything superfluous in the temple, they, they, were, they were excommunicated from the temple. They could not work in the temple dealing with the bread, the show bread. How much more worse are we who are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ going up in the church and being superfluous in our nature thinking that God is going to accept that. A lot of people in the church are being lied to because they don't know the God that they serve. You understand? Just because we're saved by grace doesn't mean that we continue to abide in lawlessness. So when it says... We live in a superfluous society that overemphasizes, but we talked about superfluous means superabundance, something that's beyond what is wanted, something rendered unnecessary by its abundance. Sexuality in and of itself is not the problem. So I got to make that very clear in this video. God created sex to be good because sex is God's creation. How do we know that sex is God's creation? Let me go back to Genesis chapter 2. 
when God said, let us create man in our image and likeness, male and female, he created them. He says to them, the first commandment he tells them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. This is the commandment that was given to man and woman. So the first commandment is to procreate, be fruitful and multiply. To be fruitful and multiply means to have sex. So sexuality in itself, based on God's standards, is good. It's balance. One man, one woman. But when you start to over-sexualize a person, when you over-sexualize a society, this is what we have, LGBTQ. Our overemphasis on sexuality, unnatural desires of the flesh. So homosexuality, LGBTQ, sexual confusion, perversions of all kind, bestiality, incest, um, bisexuality, sexual confusion, gender changing, gender neutral. All of these new terms that people are coming out with in society and making these things that were not normal, normal. Right? Not saying that homosexuality and none of these things never existed because nothing is new under the sun. If you read Leviticus chapter 17 or 18, it talks about all the abominations that God considered ungodly and is an abomination because when God was dealing with the nation of Israel, God would tell them, do not do the customs of the nations that I drive out before you. The Hivites, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, these nations per practice perversions. The things that I'm telling you not to do, this is what these other nations do. So homosexuality comes from these pagan nations. These are pagan cultures and pagan traditions. They come from their false god worship. So all of these things that I'm touching on is going to lead back to Baal worship. Right, so the overemphasizing on women body parts. Yes, sisters, let's talk. You guys are overemphasized on your behind, big butts. See, whatever the society pushes as the agenda on women and men, this becomes the standard and the norm. So, if a woman was to work in the temple, let's say in the in, in the in the olden days in Old Testament, a woman can't be in the temple with a big butt because that would be superfluous, right? It would distract the priests from doing what they had to do, right? It also talks about in the, in, in, in the Levites, right? The Nazarite vow talks about priests should only marry virgins. They couldn't marry a woman that was a harlot. They couldn't marry a woman who was profane. Right? So profane means secular, worldly. What do we have in today's society? Worldly women. A lot of women like to say they Proverbs 31 women, but you are worldly in your behaviors, in your mannerisms, how you carry yourself. Right? So that will be unacceptable to God. But the church will tell you, come as you are. God, when, when people say come as you are, that doesn't mean you come with all your all your ungodly traits and you don't change those ungodly traits when God says come as you are please understand where I'm coming from he's saying strip off all this worldliness and appear how I have created you so that I can work on your heart I can work on your mind give you a new spirit give you a new heart so you can keep my laws statutes and commandments that's what it means to come as you are. Not come with the weave, come with the hair hats, come with the tattoos, come with the piercings, come with the nose rings, come with the with the booty shorts and say, okay, I'm coming as I am. That's not who you are, sister. You are not that. The society has programmed you to think that way. The society has programmed you to always focus on your behind, right? And this is going to lead into the homosexual talk. Right? Where all a guy wants to deal with you is just for your behind. He don't want to do he don't even want to look you in your face when he's talking to you. He wanna look down below. He wanna look at your legs. He wanna look at your cleavage. You see what I'm saying? This is superfluous. A super abundance. So now how does this play in a role? There's not every every woman in this society has big behinds. 
Some women have average. Some people don't have none at all. <laughs> some, some have weird shapes. It is what it is. But the whole point it is, I'm trying to point out to you guys, is that when you focus on one particular type or body type or body structure or specific body part, this is superfluity where the society starts to gear itself in, okay, if your sister and you don't have a big behind, I ain't talking to you. You're not my type. Oh, if you're not skinny and you got a big behind, I'm not messing with you. If you if you're not thick, but you chubby, right? Are you overweight? I'm not messing with you. Is that fair to these other sisters who may not have that body type or they may not have that particular body part that the society wants? This is where rejection and insecurity comes into play. And don't let me get started with the men because I don't get started with the men. But you see, we have programmed our women to think a certain way, look a certain way. Okay, it's not good to have your natural hair, sister. You got to have the same hair as the white sisters. White sisters, it's not enough for you to have your hair straight. You got to have women. You got you to gotta imitate the black sisters. God has created every race individually unique. Sisters, I'm talking to black sisters. You think you're not good enough if you have curly, kinky hair. Same thing with you Spanish sisters. Y'all think y'all not good enough if y'all don't if you have if you don't have straight hair. So you gotta go perm your hair. You gotta go straighten out your hair. You gotta put dangerous chemicals in your hair because you wanna fit the standard of the European woman. And the European woman was created uniquely by God for a specific purpose, just as much as the black sister or the Hispanic sister, the Asian sister was created uniquely by God for their culture. Right? Fit the characteristics of your culture. It's okay to be different. But the society says, no, we want you to conform to our image and our standard of what we want y'all to look like. And this is where all the self-hatred and the prejudice comes from. And this is why the people who don't have that, they're overlooked or they're rejected or they're considered lame. They're considered um, not my type. Oh, you're not my type if you don't wear that. Oh, you don't have this type of body type. I'm not messing with you. I'm not sexually attracted to you. That's not right. Because the person that God may have for you, brother or sister, that's watching this video, is going to be the opposite of what the society has programmed you to like. I'm just saying. When I was in the world, I was programmed to like a certain type of woman. Strippers. Women who are night workers. Women who have big booties. I was programmed to like that. But as I started walking with God and God got me my wife my wife don't fit those descriptions and i understand why because god made it very clear hey the woman i have for you is not the description that the society portrays and if i didn't have a walk a relationship with god i would have rejected my wife out of ignorance and she would have rejected me out of her ignorance because the society pushed on her a specific type of man she should go for and that is the problem with the society. Y'all are falling into stereotypes. This falls into the, the sin of being superfluous. Overabundance of something that is unnecessary. Not every woman needs to have a big butt. And that's not always attractive if you do have it. And it doesn't make you less than or more than human if you do have it or don't have it. Some women that do have that, right? They consider it a burden. You see what I'm saying? But when you overemphasize on that part, body part, this is where idolatry comes in. So this is getting to Baal worship. What is Baal worship? In the Old Testament, Baal worship, the worship of Ishtar, Ashtoreth, the queen of heaven, right? This is all coming from Babylonia, Babylonian mythology. They worship the phallus. They worship the vagina, right? The, the yani. They worship the anus. 
the booty. So the simple fact they have women focusing on their behinds is now going to open the door to homosexuality. Because now when you have all these guys focusing on just women's behinds and they don't want to deal with no other body part but just the behind, guess what? That opens the door to say, okay, what do women and men have in common? They both have behinds. You, you see, God created this uniquely. God created a man, a man with a penis and not a vagina, right? And he created a woman with a, a yoni and breasts to breastfeed and take care of their offspring. The man gives life because the man produced seed. The seed comes from the man. The woman gets implanted with the seed. You plant a seed in the ground. What, what does the woman represent? She represents earth because you plant things in the earth. You put things in the soil. So when a man puts his seed in a woman's soil through sex, she creates life from the seed. That's life. So God deals with life. Remember, he said, I am the true and living God. Right? I don't deal with the dead. Even though he rose from the dead. And that's a beautiful thing. Because remember, God overcame life and death through Jesus Christ. But God knows that dead things belong to death. Satan deals with what? Death. So when you guys are having unnatural sexual desires. Like anal sex. And this is where the hypocrisy comes in, being a respected person. So when you create a superfluous society where people were respected for having money, a certain a level of fame, clout, or a certain body type, the people that don't have that body type is overlooked. A certain person that doesn't make that type of money. Sisters, y'all look at guys... And y'all focus on a guy's money, how much he makes. So if a guy works a regular job like a janitor, a postal worker, a, a, a MTA worker, you will overlook those guys, but you will go towards the guys that work in the upper echelon. Guys who are managers at big companies. Guys that's making 600 figures. You see what I'm saying? You want a guy like that and that's your standard you create in your head. But well, that's an idol. Don't you see that? Because what if God has you going in the direction of being humble, which he always does. God wants us to be humble and with a broken and contrite heart. That is what is pleasing to God. Not all this vanity and vain things. This is not of God. This is of the enemy. If a tr if, if sister saying they want a man of God to make 600, 600 figures, right? Drive a Bentley. Got, got many houses. Some of you got women, y'all don't even want guys that are single. Y'all want y'all want to deal with men that's already married. Oh, he had, he lives the lifestyle. I don't mind being a side piece to a married guy because I don't have self-esteem. I just want to live the life of a rich woman. I just want to live the life of what those women are displayed in the in the music videos of living. I want to live that fictitious life. Same thing with you brothers. You see, all you see is guys with big rims, big cars, nice cars, nice clothes, nice jewelry, right? Gold grills, women in their background. You think they really have those women? Those women don't belong to them at all. All of that is a fictitious lifestyle. So what is it doing to your subconscious mind when you guys are sitting there watching music video after music video after music video being programmed by Satan's agenda to be obsessive over a certain body type of woman, a certain type of woman. You think they try to get the most prettiest um, women in their music videos. Now, if you see a woman as an average woman, you're not even attracted to an average type of woman because now your mind is programmed to look for video vixens, porn stars, and actresses. Same thing with you sisters. Y'all looking for guys with six, uh, 12 inches. Like you can handle 12 inches. You can't. This is, a, this, is a, this is an unadulterated video, so I gotta make that very clear. If you are not 18 and up, you cannot hear this video. Turn this video off. I should have said that from the beginning. But that's the reason why I got kicked off. 
I'm going to touch about real topics and using the word to decode the nonsense, right? To uncover the lies. Sisters, y'all wouldn't want a guy that got six inches and up, right? But can you handle that? The society tells you to keep going bigger, but you don't know what you're doing to your womb. The, 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 the tactic that Satan is doing to women is destroying their wounds so their wounds cannot be used for procreation, birth control, abortion, can't understand um, contraceptive measures. All of these things are part of a superfluous society. Let's talk. And you think you're better than the average Joe because... You got these things, which is, is it's only to your demise. Brothers, you think because, oh, I have a 12 inch. I'm better than the brother that got a five inch. No, you're still human. At the end of the day, you both sinners. If you get if you get judged in front of God right now, both of you, if you are not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to hell without Jesus Christ atonement for your sins. This is why we tell you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Sisters, one is wearing natural hair. So the sisters that wear natural hair think that they're better than the women who wear unnatural hair in perms and relaxes. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you are going to hell. You are not saved by how you look. You are not saved by what you do. You are not saved by how good you think you are. You are not saved by how much money you make. You are saved by the blood and atonement of Jesus Christ. You are saved by grace. That is it. So, let's look. Secular music, we talked about all of this. Politics, celebrity, gossip, all of this is an overabundance in our society. Let's talk about homosexuality. This is where y'all get into respect of persons. Heterosexual brothers would think ill or negative of a homosexual brother because he did something was homosexual or detestable in front of God. And we know that homosexuality is an abomination. But guess what? Having anal sex with your wife is also considered sodomy. So if you want to be a, a righteous judge, you need to judge with righteous judgment. How are you going to judge the homosexual brother for homosexual tendencies when you still display homosexual tendencies with your wife in the bedroom? Let's talk. Oh, but she's a woman. She's not a man. It doesn't matter. In God's eyes, he see it as both sodomy. What is sodomy? Ain't no sex. Some of you sisters, let's talk sisters. Y'all say to the sister as in the porn video, giving oral sex. You'll say I'm better than the sister on the video that's giving oral sex, but you do this in your home. In secret, Christian women, you still giving oral sex. So if you want to be judgmental about the woman out there giving oral sex in the in in the in the in the corn video. And you want to say, I'm better than her because I don't sell my body for money. But you give your body to every single man that you beat. You got all these guy friends and you're giving your body out for free. So you're a respect of person and God is no respect of any persons. Remember, the Bible says God is no respect of any persons. So if you go to James chapter two, verses eight and nine. Let's give you some let's give you some scripture now. I know I've, I ran it long enough. So let me give you some scriptures. Right? Let's go to let's go to James chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. Right? So it says, "If you fulfill the royal law according to scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well." But if you have respect to person, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Right? And in verse 10 it says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of them all. So to the brother that's heterosexual, 
that's judging the homosexual brother by saying, hey, I never committed homosexuality, right? So he's guilty. He needs to be stoned at that. That's abominable, right? But you committing anal sex with your wife in the bedroom, you are equally guilty of the same act. Let's talk. So if you do not love your neighbor as yourself and you are a respecter of persons, you're like, I can't respect the homosexual. He's not a brother of mine. Only respect men who love women. You are false judging and you have a plank in your eye. You have a moat in your eye and you need to take the moat out of your eye and see the reality that God sees and not what your flesh sees. Let's talk, sisters. Same thing with y'all. At your jobs. You will, you, will, you will write a man up. You will get a man in trouble for sexual harassment because he touched you inappropriate at a job, which no man should be touching you at a job inappropriate anyway, right? But you will get a man in trouble for sexual harassment, but you women will touch a man at the job and expect that he's not supposed to report that to the boss. He's not supposed to report that to higher ups and say, hey, this woman is sexually harassing me. She's grabbing my behind. She's touching my arm. She's touching me inappropriately. I don't like that. And the reason why you sisters won't think that way is because no one never correct you about it. The society has made it okay for women to touch men inappropriately, but men cannot touch women inappropriately. Right? Respect of persons. If a man can get in trouble for touching you inappropriately, so that's the same thing should be applied to women who touch men inappropriately. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment now. So, if you fulfill the royal law according to scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye shall do well. The reason why you can't love your neighbor as yourself because you think that you're better than other people. So, you are a respect of persons. I have grace for the homosexual the same way I have grace for the heterosexual. I have grace for the transsexual the same way... I have grace for a pedophile. Minor attractions. I have, I have grace for somebody who like animals the same way a person who doesn't like animals. You judge the sin based on what you think you did or didn't do, but you don't realize that your inner man, this, which is your flesh, has thought of all these evil desires. Even if you never acted on those desires, the simple fact that it came across your mind, the simple fact that you could sit there and watch corn for hours and think about all the degrading the, the, the acts in your mind. You could sit there and watch Fifty Shades of Grey. You sisters could talk about the R word, right? You would say, oh, this guy is a pedophile, he's a creep, he's a monster. But in the same thing, you watching Fifty Shades of Grey or any other soft corn where guys are doing the R word, and y'all are turned on by the R word. But you would judge a man outwardly and say, hey, he's a monster. He's a creep for doing that. You're a hypocrite. What you do in secret, God will expose outwardly. So we live in a hypocritical society that deals with superfluous ideology that overemphasize on sexuality unnatural desires and we judge one higher than the other we judge one sin higher than the other when all sin is guilty before God he said you must be born again of the water and of the spirit for you to be entering into the kingdom of God so you cannot even enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again of the water and the spirit and how are you born again of the water and of the spirit if you think that your righteousness is going to get you brown me points with God Let's talk. You're not going nowhere without your sins being atoned for. And who's the person that has atoned for all of our sins? Who's the person that has atoned for the homosexual sins? Who's the person that atoned for the guy that has sex with his wife 
in the behind? Who's who, who's the person that atoned for the sins of the lesbian? Who's atoned for the sins of the tranny? Who's atoned for the sins of the guy who touched little kids? Who's the person who atoned for the sins who have sex with the animals? Who's the person that atoned for the sins of every degrading act that society has deemed unlawful? Or they put it on a pedestal and they celebrate it in pride parade. God has atoned for all of those sins. So the true freedom is not in your society and what they're promoting and portraying in the society. But your true freedom is in the spirit of God. For those who are born again of the water and of the spirit. Put a one in the chat. God has no respect of any person. God will show mercy to whoever he chooses. God will show mercy to all the people that you overlook. You will overlook the, the homeless man on the street because he say he don't got a job. He's smelly. He need to get away from me. You're ashamed for his sake. No, you should be ashamed for your sake. Because it says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So those people who you consider last place will be in first place in the kingdom of God. And those who are exalting themselves and making themselves prideful and arrogant because they got money, because they got fame, because they got clout. You're going to have no name. You, you will be like the bum in the kingdom if you make it into the kingdom. God will say, yo, you the least of my kingdom. Because you prided it and you made it more about yourself. You didn't feed the homeless. You didn't clothe those people who needed clothes. You didn't, you didn't deal with the fatherless. You didn't deal with the widows. You abused them. You adulterous nation. Repent for your wickedness. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to James chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of person. Verse 2, it says, For if they come into your assembly, a man with a gold ring and go goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit down here in a good place and say to the poor, sit down there or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and have become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom in which he has promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? Come on, people. You honor your celebrities, you honor your politicians, you honor your you honor all your sports athletes. You will put them on a pedestal. You put you put LeBron James on a pedestal versus somebody who who's playing basketball at a high school. You won't put them on the same level. You like they're not on the same level. He's a he's a professional. He's just an amateur. I'm not looking at what he's good. He don't got nothing good to offer. But I'm pretty sure the guy that's just learning how to play basketball could probably teach LeBron James a thing or two. But you're going to see it that way because you put LeBron James on a pedestal. Because you are an idol worshiper, a devil worshiper. You are a Baal worshiper. And you, you these people that that is in your politics, in your movies, they promote the agenda of the beast. You sisters... Will get upset over somebody disrespecting Beyonce faster than somebody disrespecting Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to Christian women that still listen to secular things. You will go faster to a Beyonce concert, all my single ladies, right? Put your hands up. And you're wondering why God is not answering your prayers when it comes to marriage. You wonder why you're still single and alone. Because you cannot eat at the table of the Lord and then eat at the table of devils. See, we're going to uncover everything that the society has been portraying and propagating as the standard or the norm. And this is not the norm. It is not the norm. You guys make it the norm. 
It's unnatural. It is unlawful. It is not biblical. It does not line up with the perfect will of what God wanted for man and woman. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 18 verses 24 to 30. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18 verses 24 and 30. We're going to do this, man. See, they, this is why they couldn't have me on TikTok. Because I'm unfiltered. When I'm walking with God, I'm going to be unfiltered with the truth. I'm not going to kiss your behind because you want to be a respect of persons. I'm going to tell you the truth and it's going to be offensive. Not because I want to be offending you. It's because the truth is offensive in and of itself. Right? So, let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. Let's see what Leviticus chapter 18 is. And y'all should study that whole entire chapter because it got to do with all the sexual dysfunctions. Right? Talk about incest. You guys would judge another, another race of people and talk about they having sex with family members, but you got family members in your bloodline right now that's having sex with family members. And no one ain't talking about it because everybody's like, it's a family secret. Keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about it. But it's happening and the person that it's happening to can't speak up because they're in shame. So let's shame shame. You can't judge another race of people for the same acts that you and your race do. Because I see black people in the cons community talking about the white people. Oh, the white the white men deal with homosexuality. But in Egypt, if you go look at the hieroglyphs on the wall in Egypt, they was into all of that. They was into necrophilia, having sex with the dead. They was into marrying their, their ancestors, marrying family members. They was into homosexuality. So you can miss me with that, black people. You ain't no better than the white man and the white man ain't no better than you. Y'all all are sinners and y'all die if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So repent for your fornications and your adulteries. Your adulterous generation. Let's go. Uh, let's start at verse 24. It says, defile ye not yourselves in any one of these things. For in all of these, the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations. Homosexuality is an abomination. Rape is an abomination. Incest is an abomination. Touching little kids, pedophilia is an abomination. Bestiality is an abomination. Changing your gender because you feel confused today. Cross-dressing, unisex clothing, it's an abomination. A man should not wear woman's clothing and a woman should not wear man clothing. Alright? So we're going to call sin for what it is. Can these people who practice these abominable things... Can they be saved and can they get repentance? Absolutely. God will show mercy to who he will show mercy to. So God will show mercy to even all of those people I just list as defiled and abominable. God will rescue you from the pits of hell because he did when he died on the cross for your sins and he was rose on the third day. Amen. A glorified body. He says I'm coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. So get your lives in order. You don't want to you don't want God to come back for a church that's a harlot. Because that's what the church is right now. A, a bunch of hoarder. You sisters going to church looking for a man when you should be looking for the word. You brothers are going to church looking for women when you should be looking for the word. So here's the word. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost in faith. Put a one in the chat. So what he says, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not... 
commit any of these abominations, any, neither if, he says, neither any of your own nation. So he don't even want you committing the, the, the abominations of other nations and neither the abominations of your own nation. Some of you guys are prejudiced. You will, you will value your culture. You will value your ethnicity. You will value your country over another country and say, hey, those Americans over there, they are vile. They are abominable. They are ungodly. But there's so much ungodliness in your country. There's so much abominations in your country. Let's pull the rug back and let's see the abominations in your country, you adulterous nations. God's going to judge all the nations with a rod of iron. So you want to judge another nation because you think you're more morally accepted. And you don't practice the abominations of another nation, but you are practicing the abominations in your heart. Let's talk. He says, Neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sure journey among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which are before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew you not also out when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. If you continue to be in unrepented sin, if you continue to live in your whoredom, if you continue to live defiant and constant rebellion towards the Lord God, the Most High God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, right? The Almighty God. If you continue to live in rebellion against the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and don't repent and confess your sins to God and get baptized every single one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. The land on which you live in, meaning your nation, is going to vomit you out. Why you think we had the COVID-19 the other the, a couple years ago? Why you think people had to go get the jab? Why you think people had to, how much people died? I say judgment. You guys say we're not in Revelations. Look at last year. Look at all the, the, the floods, the, 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 the firestorms, all the stuff. The fire was burning in the woods. All those different things were happening last year. Don't you think that there's judgments happening? Wake up, brothers and sisters. We in the book of Revelation. We don't got that much time. If you guys think we just in, always in the age of grace and it's always going to be grace, that age of dispensation is coming to a close. And I got a whole nother video if the Lord permits me to talk about that. We're going to talk about the age of dispensations. Where we're going to expose how God operates in every dispensation. The name Jesus Christ deals with this dispensation. The dispensation or the age to come, God is going to have a new name. God is going to have new rules and regulations and you guys that are disobedient are going to suffer. When he says, I'm coming back to rule with a rod of iron, what do you think that means? It's not saying that God's not going to be merciful and graceful because in the millennial kingdom, many people are going to be born in that millennial kingdom. Many people are going to turn their lives to Jesus Christ. They're going to be a much more peaceful, civilized kingdom because Satan is going to be bounded for a thousand years. Amen. And the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be thrown in the lake of fire. But that doesn't mean that sin is done away with. Because after the thousand years, Satan is released and he gathers the, the people from the nations of the four corners of the earth to come against God in this camp. This is before the great white throne judgment. History repeats itself. So what is God's real M.O.? Is it just to deal with just one particular sin or one particular type of people? No. God's whole MO is to deal with sin and do away with sin. Right? And that is done through Jesus Christ's atonement for our sins. When he says, and the Son of Man is lifted up, I will draw all men onto me. In the book of Joel, he says in the last days that the he said, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. So when, it, when God said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, 
This has nothing to do with race. This has nothing to do with gender. This has nothing to do with your sexuality or your preferences. This has to do with humanity as a whole who were born in sin and you in bondage because of sin. He has come to liberate us. So the true freedom is not you going out there celebrating pride parade. And shaking it in God's face. Because what is the opposite of pride? Humility. Y'all don't, celebra don't celebrate hu humility. Y'all celebrate pride. Pride represents the devil. Because God, God said, I'm against the proud. I resist the proud. Say it is a God of pride. You're not celebrating God, brother. You can't say I'm a homosexual and I'm a Christian. That's an oxymoron. Is either you a Christian or are you still a sinner? If you're still using worldly things to identify yourself with, you are still a sinner. Understood? If you identify as a Christian, a child of God, I am born again of the water of the spirit. Even though you may still struggle with those worldly, the worldly tendencies, you may still struggle in your flesh with those worldly desires. But this is where you start to crucify those worldly desires and allow God to enter in your heart and renew your mind. Y'all judge one another. Even the, even the LGBTQ, y'all would judge one another amongst each other. So it is always dysfunction and division among each other. Y'all look at the Christian, you look at the Christian walk and say, okay, why y'all so divided? Why y'all got so many different denominations? But if you look at Islam, Islam have a whole bunch of different denominations. Other religions have a whole bunch of different denominations. Y'all got Freemasonry, y'all got different sororities, you got different groups, even African spirituality, you got Ifa, you got Santorio, you got Palo Miombe, you got Voodoo, all of these different sections and factions are division. So who create religion? Is it Jesus that create religion or is it the devil? It says the God of this world who is Satan blinds the minds of those who don't believe the gospel. So how are we set free? What is true freedom and how does that look like? It's shown through Jesus Christ, the word of God made flesh. He showed us how to love each other. He showed us how to serve each other. You guys just want to be served. You don't want to serve others. How are you fulfilling the law if you don't serve one another? How are you expressing love if you don't serve one another? It's not about being served. It's about serving others. If you want to be a leader, you got to learn how to be led. If you want to be uh, in higher up power, you got to know how to serve. Or you're just a dictator. You want the title God. You want the title reverend. You want the title apostle. You want the title prophet. But what is it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? I want you guys to take this down as notes. Romans chapter 1 verses 21 to 28. And we can go there and we're going to end this video. Right? I don't want to be too long on this video. But here's the notes. I want you guys to take notes. Leviticus chapter 21 verses 17 and 18. Romans chapter 1 verses 21 to 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 27 and 29, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 and 5, 1 to 5, James chapter 1 verse 21, and you can read the whole James chapter 1, I'd rather you read the whole James chapter 1, just read that, right? James chapter 2 verses 1 and 9, we just explained that, right? James chapter 4 verses 1 to 6, right? So let's go to Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Let's do that. You said, is the Trinity man-made because I, I know this woman this, who seems to be obedient to God and believes Jesus Christ is God, but not the Trinity. Jesus is one, right? And I've explained this in plenty of other videos. The Trinity is false. In the contents of there's three gods. God has a triune nature. So when we talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, talk about the same God. God the Father has a different function than God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, right? But they're all God, right? 
just look at it for, like from a perspective of yourself. Remember, if we're created in God's image and likeness, right? So man has three natures or three functions, right? Spirit, soul, body, right? Your spirit is not your soul and your soul is not your spirit and your body is not your soul or your spirit, right? Yes, the Father is spirit. It says to worship him in spirit and truth. The Son is the visible image of the Spirit of God. So the Son is the body, right? He created a body, which is the Son. So when he says, when you see the Father, when you see me, you see the Father. Because just like spirit, you cannot see spirit, but you can see a body. So the body is a representation of God. So when it says the word of God was made flesh, meaning God took on the likeness of flesh. That's all it means. It's not no three different gods. So if Christians think there's three different gods, no. God the Father represents the soul, the mind, will, and emotions. God the Holy Spirit represents the spirit of God. God the Son represents the word of God made flesh, the body of God. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. Let's get to Romans chapter 1. Look what he says. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image like unto corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile afflictions. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts, one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So God will give you over to a reprobate mind if you keep rejecting the truth of God. All you brothers and sisters that hear the truth of God, when you hear the gospel and you reject Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you go back to your adultery, you go back to your fornication, you go back to your homosexuality, you go back to your bestiality, you go back to touching kids, you go back to your incest or whatever you're into, you are now given over to Satan and you have a reprobate mind, but you can't repent. A lot of you guys are going to take that mark of the beast because you are living in unrepented sin. Look what he says. He says, because when they knew God, they glorify him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. When you become a respect of person, you become vain in your imaginations. What is your imaginations? Your mind. The thoughts that come into your mind, your heart, your heart desire, what's in your heart. It says out of the heart, it comes the issues of life. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speak it. That's why confession is important. All the sin that's in your life, whether you did it outwardly or you did it on your mind, God already sees it. So you can't judge the person who's living in homosexuality who's living outwardly their homosexual desires when some of you brothers who may be heterosexual may be still struggling with homosexual tendencies on the inside. Some of you guys, you you think because the homosexual brothers acting out his homosexual tendencies with, with the same sex, but you're doing this with your wife. How? You're practicing sodomy. Ain't no sex. Same thing with you sisters. You would judge the the homosexual guy, right? But you sisters are practicing homosexuality because it's right here in the Bible. It says, look, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Look at lesbianism. Girl on girl action is praise and worship 
over two guys doing the same act. See what I'm saying? And in God's eyes, they're both unjust. We talked about it with the workplace. Men getting in trouble for sexual harassment, but women not getting in trouble for the same thing. It's not looked at as harassment. It's looked at as initiation as, oh, man up. Be a man. You should be happy a woman is touching you. Nobody wants to be touched inappropriately. Period. And if anybody's touching you, whether you're man or woman, it's inappropriately. Period. It's not condoned. Some of you guys will judge the pedophile. You say, oh man, that guy is a pedophile. Yeah, like with R. Kelly. When R. Kelly got in trouble for peeing on that little girl, urinating, right? When he's having sex with that 11-year-old girl, you would judge R. Kelly. But you got family members that's doing that right now. And none of these people ain't being judged. Nor are their, their sins being brought to the forefront. And then the sisters who are saying these guys are creeps. Let's talk. Y'all still have fantasies about the guy that still touches you. You just don't want nobody to know that you have these sexual desires. You don't want nobody to know that you got a little um, kinkish or dark fantasy. See, that is the inner man judging the outer man. Because the people who are getting called out for their sins... You judge them and you throw stones at them. But the people who think about these things on the inside and nobody doesn't know what they're into. You think you got away? God is like, nobody's getting away. Every stone will be unturned. Every sin will be exposed. So when you confess your sins, it's about setting yourself free. So here's my answer. This is my question to you guys. You judge the homosexual, you judge the pedophile, you judge the lesbian, you judge the transsexual, you judge the people who cross-dress, you, you judge all the abominations that people do outwardly, right? You judge the, the porn star, you judge the woman who got raped, you judge the person who uh, was on doing all the detestable acts in the corn videos, you're like, oh, I would never do that, I could never sell my body, all right? You're a Christian woman, but you think about those same thoughts in your insides. You're a Christian man, but you still do those things that is abominable in secret. So let me ask you a question. The person who got their sins exposed versus the person who did not get their sins exposed, who will God show mercy to first? Put your answers in the comment section. Is it the person whose sins are exposed or the person whose sin is not exposed? Because... If you are a respecter of person, you still have a moat in your eye. You haven't taken the moat out of your eye to see the bigger reality that sin is sin. You said neither. The first, the person that will get mercy first. I'm not saying that they can't get, they can both get mercy. The person who can get mercy first is the one who confessed their sins. If you don't confess your sins to God, you're not going to get mercy from God. Why do you think the Pharisees were getting mercy? Exactly, exposed. Why? Because the person who confessed their sins to God receives mercy from God. The person whose sins are concealed from God, which is not really concealed because God sees everything. Those who have a sense of righteousness, remember the Pharisees, they had a sense of righteousness. They were judging Jesus for hanging out with tax collectors, prostitutes, people who were unpopular. But Jesus Christ is like, listen, y'all dress array, you you decorate the outer garment, but your insides are dead man bones. The Pharisees, because they think, because they kept the law of God, they were more holier than everybody else. And God said, no, you worse than everybody else because you yet to recognize that you are you are a sinful creature in need of repentance. He said, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for those who are sick and in need of physician. So if you're a heterosexual man judging a homosexual man for something you do in your bedroom with your wife, you're equally guilty of sodomy just as much as the homosexual man. Let's talk. Same thing with you sisters. You judge the sister for giving um, oral sex on a, on a porn tape, but you do this in the house with your husband. You're equally as guilty of that same act 
as the porn star? Who's going to get more mercy first? Who's going to get mercy first? And who's going to get no mercy? The person who exposed their sins and confessed their sins to God. The person who acts like they're righteous and act like they never did that or they never thought that. Because they're like, oh yeah, I never touched kids before. But you're watching child corn. You have, you have nieces and, and nephews. Some of you women judge the men because they touch little girls. But they got grown women touching little boys. Nobody don't want to dress that. Huh? You got aunties that look at their nephews with lust in their eyes. Nobody address that. The sexual or moral. Everybody's going to be judged for every sin. Whether they did it in their mind or did it outwardly. If they don't confess their sins to God. They are going to burn in hell. The only way you cannot burn in hell is if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior in faith and receive the water baptism in faith, being born again of the water and of the Spirit. So I'll leave you with this. Acts chapter 2, verse 30, um, Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Let's go there real quick. I'm going to give you a solution. The solution is God. You guys are trying to save your save your society by saving the, saving the trees. Y'all y'all went from plastic bags to uh recyclable um bags or whatever y'all want to do. That's not saving the society. Y'all want to go um go green. That, that's going to stop climate change. Climate change is a is a sign of God's judgments on the nation. So if you're saying you're dealing with climate change, no, we're dealing with the judgments of God. And how do we deal with the judgments of God? Before I go to Acts chapter 2, let's, let's talk about this. You guys can avert the judgments by repenting. So the answer is in the book of Jonah. Remember Jonah was sent to Nineveh? Remember... God sent Jonah to Nineveh to tell them to repent of their fornications and their wickedness. And what did Nineveh do? Nineveh repented for their sins and sackcloth. They humbled themselves before God and they averted destruction. So if America wants to be spared, it's Acts chapter 2 verses um, 37, 38. I'm not going there yet, but let me finish this. Right? You can put that in the chat room. I appreciate you, brother. Put that in the chat room. But like I'll say it, you guys want to do all this great humanitarian, false humanitarian acts. Y'all want to go out there and protest back Black Lives Matter. Y'all want to go out there and protest against uh, a whole bunch of nonsense. All y'all could do is sit out there and protest. But nobody is trying to confess their shame. Everybody's out there in, in pride parade celebrating their shame. God is like, I don't want you to be celebrating your shame. I want you to confess your shame so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. All right? So the answer to all of our problems as nations that are under judgment is do what Nineveh did in the book of Jonah. Humble yourselves before an almighty, terrifying God that's coming back with wrath and judgment for the nations. Humble yourself before God so that you can avert the, the judgments and not be judged harshly. Because everybody's going to get judged. But you better watch yourself. So if I were you, stop trying to save the trees because the trees ain't the problem. Stop trying to um, recycle uh, the trees or plastics because that's not the problem. The problem is your sin and your wicked and heart. That's the problem. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment now. It's Acts chapter 2 verses 37 and 38. So let's go to, ch let's go to Acts chapter 2 verses 37 and 38. And we're going to wrap this up. Y'all are living in fornication and in wickedness. And y'all try to act like y'all holy and down. Y'all going to church saying amen. I don't need your amens. Save your amen. Save your flattery. Give it to God. 
Give all your heart, your mind, your soul to God. I ain't asking for no donations. Give your, give your heart and soul to God. That's the appropriate donation. Give your body as a living sacrifice. Let's go. Look at this. He says, and this is when Peter and the apostles were talking to the multitudes of people about Jesus Christ. Look what the multitudes of people say. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What you guys should be asking is not how to save the trees and the climate change and on recyclables and protests. What you should be asking, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Christians, your response should be, and Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Do you want Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent and stop living in your fornications. Turn away from Babylon or you will partake of her plagues in our judgments. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for using me today to preach this powerful message to the body of Christ and those who needed to hear this message. I pray that you allow this video to be uploaded on the YouTube. I pray that you allow those who need to see and watch this video on the YouTube and even on the TikTok because I know I got kicked off of there. As I upload the clips, Father God, I pray that you will protect the, the message and the messenger protect the messenger from any spiritual retaliation protect the message from any attacks of the enemy for the God allow this message to reach as much souls as needed in this time and hour we decree and declare it in Jesus name amen put an amen in the chat room brothers and sisters you have received the assignment I've written an article about the superfluous nation so if you guys are acquainted with the website Go to www.footworkministries.com. I always upload new blogs. So I write blogs for the Lord. You guys can read that. It's free to read and download. I have books that I've written for the Lord, testimonials. So go to the website at www.footworkministries.com so you can be updated with the blogs and the articles that I put out there. All right? And if you are a friend of mine on, on Facebook, I also upload the blogs. The links to the blogs on the, um, on the website. And if you guys, you want me to send you guys the links to the articles, you guys can hit me up in the DM, say, hey, Neil, send me the link to your latest article. I'll send you the link to the article, Superfluous Nation. So if you guys want to read that article, I'll send you the link in your DMs. And, I'll, and then you guys check out the website and you know read whatever is there. It's time to clean up house. Judgment comes to the house of God first. So Christians, I know you are celebrating your grace. You got saved. Welcome to the welcome to the kingdom. But it's time to clean up house. You can't say come as you are and remain as you are. You have to come and allow God to clean up your temple. Which temples you are. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict us of our sins. The Holy Spirit's job is to correct us. And make sure that we walk in the ways that are of God. Which is of righteousness and holiness. We are not saved by what we do for God. We are saved by what God did for us. So yes, we are saved by grace and not of works. But God is setting you apart. For works. For the kingdom of God. So be used by God as an instrument of righteousness and not be used by the enemy as an instrument of unrighteousness. When you was in the world and practicing all these abominations, you are used as an instrument of unrighteousness. You are an alien. You are as an enemy to God. But God in his love and his mercy is forgiving you for all of your sins and all of your trespasses. And you just need to put your trust and faith in God. And also, if you guys are not saved, the Lord has made me write a whole new sinner's prayer for the body of Christ. 
this one is going to hit home hard because it's very powerful. So if you guys want to link to the sinner's prayer as well, hit me up in the DM. Say, hey, Neil, I'm not I'm not, I'm, I'm not saved. I want to give my life to Christ. I'm going to send you the new updated sinner's prayer. The one that he had me write over this week because it was a lot of revelations that God has given me. This one is very powerful. It's not it's not the standard. All right. And even if you guys feel the need to change something in the sinner's prayer, I'd rather you do that. And the reason why I say that is because you have to make this prayer yours. You can't just repeat what I said on a piece of paper. S repeating what you see on a paper, that is not relationship. That is religion. So if you're reading the sinner's prayer and the Holy Spirit is making you say it in a way that is unique to you, meaning, okay, you might see a word that you may not use, you're like, I don't really want to say that word. I want to say it this way. Personalize it. That's what I want you guys. That's the word. I'm Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. Personalize the sinner's prayer to match your demands and needs. Right? So you don't have to say the sinner's prayer exactly the same way that it's written on the paper. Just use the, the sinner's prayer as a template or a form of motivation to get you into the spirit of confessing your sins and telling God that you're a sinner and that you accept them as your personal Lord and Savior. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys and ladies in the next video. Peace.